Hello friends, today we are going to see a few problems on uh, designing finite state machine and I'm going to cover some, some of the problems on divisibility. Okay, so let's go with the first design problem. I need to design a finite state machine which will accept decimal number divisible by 3. Okay, to solve any kind of finite state machine problem, I'm going to follow four steps. Okay. So let's go with the step number one, logic. For every problem, I'm going to follow four steps. The first step will be logic. Okay, now the problem is on divisibility. So my logic for all the divisibility problem is the number of state in the automata will be equal to the number of remainder. Okay, so let's say if I have a decimal number 0, if I divide it by 3, remainder will be 0. If I divide 1 by 3, remainder will be 1. 2 by 3, remainder will be 2. Okay. Similarly, if I divide 3 by 3, again I am going to get a remainder 0. 4 by 3, I am going to get a remainder as 1. Okay. So, you divide any decimal number by 3, I am sure we are going to get remainder either 0, 1 or 2. Okay. So, this is my state formation logic. Now, I will say that Q0 is a state which is used to represent remainder 0. Okay. Similarly, I will write Q1 is a state which is used to represent remainder 1. And Q2 is a state which is used to represent remainder as 2. Okay. So, how many remainders that many state will be formed, okay? Now, when I say the automata is in Q0 state, it means that it has 0 with it. When the automata is in Q1 state, it means that it has 1 with it, okay? Now, my second step will be formal notations. Now, to design any automata, we are going to use five formal notation to represent the complete automata. The first formal notation which we are going to use is a Q. Q is a set of all the state in the automata. So we know there are only three state. So I am going to write Q is a set of all the state Q0, Q1, Q2. It's a finite number of states. Okay. It's a finite set. Then we have another formal notation. The next formal notation is sigma. Okay. Now what can be the input to this automata? The input is decimal number and sigma represent a set of input symbol. When I say decimal number, I am sure the symbols will be made up of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. Okay. And the third formal notation is delta. Delta is nothing but transition function and transition function we are going to design it in our step number 3. Okay. Now which is the next formal notation? Q0. Q0 is a start state of the machine. So I will tell you how to determine which state is the start state. Okay. Now when I start this automata, what we have with us? Nothing. And nothing is represented by 0. Okay. When I start automata, it has nothing. Means I can say I have 0 with me. So which state say that I have 0 with me? Q0 is a state which say I have 0 with me. Okay. So Q0 is going to be the start state. See, so don't get confused. Q0 is the name of a state. And this Q0 is the formal notation which represents which state is going to be the start state. Okay. Now, the fifth formal notation is F. F is a set of final state. So, final states are the states where the goal of the problem is achieved. What is the goal of the problem? To check if the number is divisible by 3 or not. When the number is divisible by 3, the number is divisible by 3 when the remainder is 0. So, which state is our goal state? Q0 is our goal state. So, Q0 is going to become the final state state okay so we completed two step the first is logic second is formal notation now the third step which we are going to see is designing delta 
design delta. Now, this delta, it can be designed in two ways. Okay? I can design the delta in two ways. The first way is called as transition table. Okay? And the second way is state transition diagram. Okay? So, I will abbreviate it as STD. Okay? So, state transition diagram is can, delta can be implemented by using state transition diagram or delta can also be implemented by using transition table. Now, once I get a table, I can get the diagram and once I get the diagram, I can easily get the table. Okay? So, but uh, for all the problem, what I am going to do is, I am going to design the transition table. It will be quite easy for us to design the table rather than directly designing the diagram, straight transition diagram. Okay, now <coughs> this table is made up of made up of number of rows which is represented by the state Q0, Q1, Q2. Okay, so I will say that these are the states of the automata. One state, one row. Okay, the number of rows will be equal to the number of state. Now, which state is going to be the start state? Q0. We know Q0 is the start state. So, what I am going to do, I am going to put an arrow to this state. So, it represents Q0 is a start state. Now, which is the final state here? Q0 is again the final state. So, put a star over it. Okay. Now, how many columns will be there? The columns will be equal to the number of input symbols. How many input symbols are there? 10 input symbols are there. Right? Okay. But we can reduce this, we can group this column, okay, and we can reduce the number of columns. So for the divisibility problem, what you can do is to <coughs> select the number of columns or to decide how many numbers or number of columns are there and which columns, which symbols can be grouped into column, okay. What I'm going to do is number of remainder will be equal to the number of columns. So, how many columns will be there now? Three columns will be there. Okay. So, I will say this column is for all the number which represent remainder 0. This is for remainder 1. This is for remainder 2. Okay. So, this Q0, uh, remainder 0 can also be represented by 3n. Remainder 1, 3n plus 1. Remainder 2, 3n plus 2. Okay. Now, <coughs> So, uh, give any value of n, you will get all the number which are, which has the remainder 0. So, it can be represented by 3n. Let's say n is 2. 3 into 2, 6. 6 is a, uh, 6 has a remainder 0. Okay. So, which all symbols from sigma are having remainder 0? 0, 3, 6 and 9. Which are the symbols from sigma has remainder 1? So, it will be 1, 4, 7. And remainder 2 numbers will be 2, 5 and 8. Okay. Now, I need to fill up this entire table. How to do that? Okay. Now, Q0 represent what we have. We have 0 with us. Q1 represent we have 1 with us. Q2 represent we have 2 with us. Okay. Now, what I need to do is, I need to get the state, okay? I, I need to get what will, which state will come here, okay? You are in state Q0. What do you have with you? You have 0 with you, okay? Pick up any number from this set. Let's say 9, okay? Divide it by 3. What is the remainder? Remainder is 0. Now, remainder 0 is represented by Q0. So, I am going to write Q0 here, okay? Similarly, we will fill up the another entry in this table. So, you are in state Q0. I have 0 with me. Take any number from here, let's say 7, divide by 3, remainder will be 1. Remainder 1 is represented by Q1. Okay, now what is the next entry? See here, you are in state Q0, I have 0 with me, pick up any number from here, let's say 5, divide by 3, remainder will be 2, remainder 2 is represented by Q2. <coughs> okay, clear? Yeah, now you are in which state Q1, what I have with me is 1, Pick up any number from here, let's say 0, 10, divide by 3, remainder is 1. See, this is 
symbols. Okay, we need to concatenate. So I have one with me. Zero comes, it becomes ten. So it's like a string concatenation. Divided by three, remainder will be one. Remainder one is represented by Q one. Okay. Now you are in which state? Q one. What I have with me? One. Take any number from here. Let's say seven divided by three. Remainder will be two. Remainder two. Which state? Q two. <coughs> Good. Okay. You are in which state? Q one. I have one with me. Pick up any number from there. Five divided by three. Remainder will be zero. Remainder zero is represented by which state? Q zero. Now the last row. Come on. Let's do it fast. Okay. Now you are in which state? Q two. I have two with me. Then pick up any number. Let's say three. Divided by three, remainder will be two. Remainder two is represented by Q two only. Okay, for all the divisibility problem, you can apply a shortcut here. What is that shortcut? If you get Q zero here, simply increment the state number. So Q zero ke baad Q one, Q one after Q one, Q two. Okay. Similarly, Q one after Q one, what you will get? Q two after Q two, what you will get? Q zero. Okay, I can apply that shortcut logic on this the last row. After Q two, I will get Q zero, and after Q zero, I will get Q one. Okay, if I want to verify, let's verify it. How it works? You are in which state? Q two. I have two with me. Pick up any number from here. Let's say one divided by three. Remainder is zero. Remainder zero is represented by Q zero. You are in state Q two. I have two with me. Let's pick up any number from there. Let's say five divided by three. Remainder will be what one. Remember, number one is represented by Q one. Okay. Now one more thing, as I told you that if I get a table, I will get a diagram. Okay. Now <coughs> let's try to draw the diagram. What I will do, I will just erase this part, and then we will draw the state transition diagram. Okay. Now in the state transition diagram. Uh, The number of circle will be equal to the number of state. How many states I have? Three. So I will draw three circles here. Okay. I will represent. I will give the name to the state Q zero, Q one, and Q two. Okay. Which state is the final state? Q zero is the final state. So I will put a double circle to it. Okay. Which state is a start state? Q zero is a start state. Put an arrow to it, and on this arrow, write down start. Okay. Now, yeah, I have a table. Let's draw the diagram. You are in state Q zero. After getting three n number, I'm going to go to Q zero. So on three n number, any three n number, I'm going to go to Q zero. You are in state Q zero. I get three n plus one number. I will go to Q one. So three n plus one number. Q zero on three n plus two number. I will go to Q two. Q one. You are on zero. Where you will go? Q one. 3n number. Q1 on 3n plus 2. I will go to 3n plus 1 on 3n plus 1. I will go to Q2. Okay. <coughs> And Q1 on 3n plus 2 number. I will go back to Q0. Okay. Now the last one. Q2 on 3n number. It will go to 3 Q2 only. Q2 on 3n plus 1. I'm going. I'm going to go back to Q zero <coughs> and Q two on three n plus two. I'm going to go to Q one back. Okay, so this diagram is made up of but states and they have the transition arrows between the state. So this diagram is called as state transition diagram. Okay, so we'll abbreviate it by STD as I told you here. Okay, now. My model is ready in front of you. This represents the behavioral model of a machine. How the <coughs> automata or the behavioral model for this problem will is represented. Okay, it's in front of you. Now my fourth step will be test the model. Okay, so now we are ready with our model, but we not tested our model. Okay. So we need to test our model whether it's going to work correctly or not. Okay. So for this, I'm going to for I'm going to have two example. One will be the valid example, and other I will take invalid example. So I'm going to do I'm going to verify my model by using both kind of example, valid and invalid. Okay. So as you know, automata work on string and strings are made up of 
symbol. So here, <coughs> these are, this look like a numbers, but they are actually symbol for us. Okay. Now let's take any valid example. Let's say one, four, seven. Is it divisible? Yes. <coughs> one. Okay. Fourteen. Two. And here. Okay. So this number, I know it's divisible by three and it should be accepted by our model. Okay. So whenever automata process any string on this uh, model, it uses a function called as a del cap. Del cap, the initial state is written here and the input string is written here. Okay. So use a table or use a diagram. Okay. Because both are same because they are interconvertible. So Q0 on one. Q0 on 1, where it goes? Q1. So we process one symbol. Now remaining symbols are 4, 7, 1, 2. Q1 on 4, Q1 on 4. It goes where? Q2. What is the remaining string? 7, 1, 2. Q2 on 7, Q2 on 7. Where it goes? It goes to Q0. Remaining is 1, 2. Q0 on 1, Q0 on 1. Where it goes? Where it goes? Q0 on 1. Where it goes? Q1. Remaining string is 2. Okay, the last one. Q1 on 2. Q1 on 2. Where it goes? Q0. Remaining string is nothing. Nothing is represented by epsilon. Epsilon is an empty string. Okay. So, means the string is over. Now, the automata will halt. Okay. And what is the halting state? Q0. Does, does it is a final state? Yes. Q0 belongs to final state so i can say the input string is valid and it is accepted by the automata okay let's see the invalid example let's take uh, any string which is invalid let's say 421 is invalid okay let's process it you are in state q0 4 to 1 Q0 on 4, where it goes? Q0 on 4, it goes to Q1. Remaining string is 2, 1. Q1 on 2, Q1 on 2, it goes to Q0. Remaining string is what? 1. Okay, Q0 on 1, Q0 on 1, where it goes? It goes to Q1. And as I have no input symbol, I will write down epsilon there. Okay, now check whether Q1 does it belongs to final state? No. So, I will say it's invalid and not accepted. So, it will be rejected. Okay, this string got rejected. See, I can represent the machine or the model in such a way and I can also verify my model whether it's going to, whether it's correct or not. So, that is my fourth step which is doing the verification of my model. Okay, so, we'll cover few more problem on divisibility in my next video if you like this video please do subscribe to my channel and share this video with your friends thank you very much for watching my video thanks